Paul Spicelli. I'm Chief Product Officer at Scality. In this video, I'll demo our new Ring 7.4 Supervisor Management UI. This is going to show you all of the latest features we've built into Release 7.4 to make operating the Ring super easy. And here we have a special focus on the HPE Apollo server platform in our partner demo lab at Comport Technology Solutions. There are some major new capabilities here in Release 7.4 including an intuitive new look and feel to the supervisor itself, as well as a new S3 service management console and an integrated data browser. So let's flip over to our supervisor tab in our browser. And as you can see, I'm logged in here as the administrator. This is a web-based portal. And after logging in, it starts us on the supervisor dashboard. This already has tons of useful information uh, available at a glance. If we start by looking at the left side of the web panel, we see it's logically divided into three sections. Starting at the bottom, we have the platform hardware on which the Ring software is deployed. And above that, we have the logical Ring layer. Both the data Ring and the metadata Ring are displayed here. And then at the top, we have the service layers. Uh, since the Ring can present both object and file interfaces natively, we have here an Amazon S3 compatible service and a SMB file system service uh, viewable here. So on the platform side, notice that it shows me graphically how many servers I have deployed. If this were a multi-site ring, it would also show which data center each of the servers are located in. And if any of them had an abnormal status, rather than green, it would indicate them here with a red color. So let's start by clicking on the servers. Uh, notice that I can see now the list of physical and virtual servers deployed in, as part of this ring. There are six physical servers, as well as two additional virtual machines. Uh, the one at the top here is for the SMB file connector, and at the one at the bottom is our supervisor instance that we're demonstrating. So I can go ahead and click on any server to learn and see more information about it. For example, here we see that I'm deployed on industry-leading Apollo, HPE Apollo 4530 servers. These are very high-density servers that can be configured with up to 64 disk drives both flash and high capacity spinning disks. Uh, in this lab, the servers are only partially populated with just 12 drives, uh, which is still fine for demo purposes. Now notice that this server itself has been assigned a role as an S3 connector, a storage node, and also as a simple REST server for the ring. If I click on the hardware tab, it shows me even more information. So this is a dual Intel CPU server with 128 gig of memory, uh, it shows me the network information info, uh, network information card info. Uh, and in this case, we just have 12 drives uh, in this demo setup. I can also click on the performance tab uh, to see key, uh, trending key performance indicators for this server. Uh, again, I don't have much of a load here, but uh, you can see some load coming in uh, at the level of this server. Uh, that's also available at all levels, uh, at the service layer, ring layer, servers, and disk level. We can see all of these different KPIs. Uh, if I now click on the disks, it shows me a quick status view of each disk drive uh, in these HPE servers. Uh, note that I can sort on any column here, uh, sort by server, sort by status, uh, sort by utilization of disk drives. And it shows me, for example, the utilization and the free levels for each disk. Uh, clicking on a disk itself gives me access to the KPIs I mentioned uh, a minute ago. Uh, so this is useful for determining load at the disk level within the system. Okay, so lots of granularity there. So now why don't we click one level up and look at the ring layer. And what we see here is some new capacity planning and forecasting information uh, that we put into release 7.4. Uh, as we said before, this is a small test ring in our demo lab. So this ring itself has just over 70 terabytes of physical capacity in it, and only about 10% of it is currently utilized. Uh, the net capacity would show the usable capacity for your data based on the overhead of either data replication or erasure coding, uh, however you've configured it. In a production system, this forecast area would show the projected capacity utilization based on your current growth rate. So let's say you were adding 30 or 50 terabytes per day it would make a projection, and it will estimate the time to 80% utilized in the whole ring. So that gives you insight into capacity planning for your next upgrade uh, in time to order the next set of HPE Apollo servers. Uh, now we can look at the uh, top level layer. So let's look at the S3 service layer. Uh, of course, everything I talk about here, you can get also for the file service as well. 
Now, as I click on the S3 service, the supervisor shows me a calculated availabil availability level. This is based on the health of all the components. Uh, this ring is currently looking good. It's at 100%. And I see that all of the S3 services are up and running. Uh, the bar graph down here shows the request response codes uh, from the S3 service over time. Uh, how many succeeded, uh, how many errors, how many system errors, if any, over time. Um, if you had buckets uh, and data here, there's a super useful view under usage uh, that shows you the top 10 buckets. This would actually show the highest loaded S3, op S3 buckets by operations and bandwidth over the last time period. So it's a great way to see what parts of the system are experiencing high load and it can really help spot any performance issues that may be brewing. Uh, and as we said, the performance tab, uh, assuming there were some load here, it can show the trend line of service level performance on the S3 part of the ring, uh, say over the last uh, hours or days. Uh, so that's very useful. So if we go back to the dashboard, we can see that there's lots more information available here, including a, uh, an advanced monitoring tab for some of the storage admins, as well as for S3 itself, this is where you get access to the S3 service management console and the S3 browser. Okay, so we're logged in here as the Rings Super Admin. This presents me with a page view from which I can manage all my Ring accounts. Uh, so this is a visual interface to the Rings Amazon IAM compatible multi-tenancy. Uh, this has accounts, the ones that we're seeing here. And of course, within accounts, we'll be able to manage users, groups, and access control policies. Uh, there's already a few accounts here. And for each one of them, I can do actions like look at the account metrics, generate keys, passwords, and of course, delete the account. Uh, but maybe the natural way to show this is to actually create a new account. Uh, we'll enter a password for it, and then enter a simple password, and go ahead and submit that. And of course, they need to match. Okay, so there we are. Uh, that's got the new account. Uh, one of the things I'd like to do to make this useful is to create uh, or generate some access keys. So these are S3, Amazon S3 compatible keys. That means I get an access key and a secret access key pair. Okay, and I'll want to save the secret access key because it's actually only displayed once. Uh, so what can we do with this? Well, we can actually go ahead and connect to the S3 data browser and actually start uh, uploading and managing some of our data. Uh, so I've got the first part of it. Now I need the secret access key, uh, and that should allow us to connect to the endpoint. And indeed, we're there. Okay, so to get started, the natural thing to do, of course, is to say, let's create a bucket. Why don't I just call it Paul Bucket? Uh, that should create, and there we are. There's Paul's bucket. I can do things like view the properties of the bucket. So is it versioned? Not yet. By default, it's not versioned. It's not uh, replication enabled. And of course, it's not public. Okay, so those are things that we can, uh, we can modify and edit as we need. Uh, the more interesting thing is let's go into the bucket and actually upload objects. We can do this through drag and drop, or as you can see, we can do it directly through the interface here. So I'll just pick up a few screenshots uh, directly from my desktop. Those are pretty small, so they'll only take a few seconds to upload. And once we've got them, you'll see that we can actually go and work with them. Uh, so things like viewing the info of each of the objects, I can see a lot of the attributes, uh, things like uh, the external link, I can even do things like modify the tags and the metadata. So well, one of the things we can do here is directly add user uh, metadata. Uh, perhaps I want to say that this the topic of this, uh, uh, this metadata or this uh, file that I've saved is the image. Okay, and that goes ahead and saves that. Uh, now for each one of these, it's of course possible to go and access it directly. Uh, so I can try right now by just clicking on this external link uh, but as, as, as I've expected, since this was a non-public or a private object, uh, the first thing it did is not allow me to get in there. I can go ahead and toggle that and make it a public object, uh, after which I should be able to click and actually see the object itself through the link, uh, which we did. Okay, so that's extremely useful just for uploading and downloading objects. Uh, very, very simple. Uh, the last thing I'd be able, like to be able to show you is the account admin view of the administrator console. So let's go ahead and log out, okay? And in this case, we wanna log in as the uh, existing demo account. So why don't we go ahead and try that? Uh, so now I'm in, I'm the demo account user and in, instead of accounts, I'm now seeing usernames. I can manage users, groups. And as I said before, the new thing that we've added here is policies. 
and of course account metrics. So uh, take a look at this. We can see the usable capacity, the operations, uh, the total objects and the bandwidth uh, per account. So this is very, very useful uh, to be able to see the utilization information at that level. Uh, if I now click on the policies tab, uh, there are a couple of predefined policies, things that define full access and read-only access. I can add that easily to my users. Uh, but very interestingly, and a new thing we've added is the ability to define a new policy. So I can say something like my new policy two. Uh, I can actually select what kind of actions I'd like to be able to do. So let's just call this enforce. And I'd like to add a policy let's, that lets me get, list, and put, but not delete uh, objects on any of my buckets. Okay, so I can actually generate the Amazon compatible JSON. Uh, there is an advanced mode here where you can toggle it and actually go in and directly edit things. Uh, so if you're an expert at the uh, JSON language, that's easy to do. Uh, but once you're done with it, uh, what do you do? You go ahead and submit uh, the statement. And uh, now I have an, a policy uh, that's saved to the in system and it's actually going to be enforced uh, on any user or application operation that accesses buckets in this account. Okay, so that's quite powerful. So why don't we go back now and take a quick summary tour here. Uh, Ring 7.4 and 7.4.1 uh, provide some really powerful new capabilities that simplify the ring. Uh, this is top to bottom from uh, managing and monitoring the hardware all the way up to the software. Uh, we do continue to work with our strategic partner HPE uh, to make operating the ring on Apollo storage servers as efficient as possible and to provide all the information needed for a comprehensive and very cost-effective management of the entire system. Uh, thanks for this look at the new Ring Supervisor UI. Thank you very much.